It's a two-speed economy. Significant segments of our population really have very little connection with the financial system. In trying to reach out to the unbanked and the underbanked, we are very mindful of our responsibilities to maintain the safety and soundness of the financial system. We are very mindful of the responsibilities to maintain the integrity of the financial system. We are very mindful of the responsibility to make sure that the um, financial consumers are not exploited. So that is the reason why we have approached the challenge of uh, promoting uh, financial inclusion uh, in an environment that is well regulated. So we are, uh, as a financial regulator, we have um, worked with the industry to be able to develop appropriate regulations that, um, in our view, conform to the principles espoused by international standards. At the same time, it is a set of uh, regulations that create space for uh, innovation by the private sector to uh, develop new products that cater to the requirements of the poor. Given the magnitude of the challenge, we have also recognized that this is not going to be a government-only solution. This necessarily must bring in the private sector in innovating and delivering financial services. We are positioning our role as that of uh, being a, what we call an enabling regulator. A regulator that makes things, that can make things uh, happen uh, through appropriate application of proportionate uh, policies. Um, and um, that, that uh, mindset also of uh, allowing the private sector allows mainstreaming of uh, financial services. Many of the solutions that we have looked at in reaching out, especially to the frontier areas, are reliant on innovations in information and communications technology. While banking reach is uh, not as extensive, most people have mobile phones uh, in the Philippines and uh, are active users. And that is an opportunity that uh, we have uh, looked at. And uh, marrying that to the delivery of financial services, it's quite inevitable to look at um, telcos as a possible uh, provider of financial services, especially payments services. But we all, we're also mindful that uh, we need to put this in a proper regulatory framework. So we allow our telcos in competition with banks to deliver um, uh, mobile money services, but we allow them to do so in a dedicated subsidiary form, so to manage the risk uh, exposures from that business and to uh, focus uh, the regulatory environment properly. So there are uh, adaptations that we had to consider, uh, but uh, keeping uh, in mind the necessity of nurturing a, a sufficiently competitive uh, environment. Addressing the needs of our overseas workers is an important driver for allowing innovation to happen in this space. By allowing the entry of uh, competition and services coming from telco-based uh, 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 remittances, uh, the competition alone uh, not only enriched the variety and quality of services, it has also uh, led the other uh, players to lower their costs all around. So, uh, the mere entry of competition has improved uh, enormously the cost and quality of uh, remittance uh, services. And that's already a, a big win. And, uh, and I think the remittance issue is not just a cross-border issue for the Philippines. There's a lot of uh, internal remittances um, uh, in this country. Uh, people working in the urbanized areas, uh, likewise sending uh, money. Uh, to their beneficiaries in the uh, provinces. So that is also an important segment of this uh, business. So it's a kind of basic financial service that's immediately appreciated uh, by the uh, poor and the unbanked. And we have also noticed that um, 
the remittance uh, services is a good entry point for introducing people into other kinds of banking services like uh, the savings, uh, savings in banks, and uh, eventually uh, credit as well. We welcome the innovations because uh, we realize that the private sector has plenty of ideas. We have positioned ourselves as regulators to study closely these innovations. Let it begin. Um, let them test uh, new ideas and learn from those ideas. We ourselves as regulators uh, learn uh, from their experiences. A necessary part of this is the constant engagement that we do um, with the uh, market players. So we understand where they're coming from and they also understand uh, where we're coming from. I think it's very important to have uh, that high degree of uh, communication. And uh, that also is our safeguard from being left behind uh, by the market. So while we allow the market to lead, uh, we cannot also afford as regulators to be left uh, too far behind. So we have to stay very close behind uh, the innovators just to make sure that uh, things do don't go out of hand. Because at the end of the day, we are quite concerned that the target market for these financial services are really uh, people who, um, who may not have had extensive experience uh, in the use of financial services and uh, are also in that regard uh, potentially vulnerable. It's so easy to create barriers that make it not worth the while of financial institutions to go after new customers. So what we did is to create uh, flexibility uh, in the regulations based on sound uh, risk-based uh, principles. Uh, among other things, um, like for example, the presentation of identification cards. This is a non-trivial problem in the Philippines where we don't have uh, a national ID system for various reasons, including political uh, reasons. However, there are many other government IDs that are being issued uh, to the public. So what we did is to allow the recognition of multiple uh, IDs into the system. Now, uh, also, uh, there are many people who live in far-flung vill villages where they don't even have any kind of uh, identification system. So uh, here, this, the solution that uh, was evolved was to allow the village leaders, in their capacity as uh, officials of government, and they know the people involved, to issue the, uh, the requisite uh, identification documents and in partnership with uh, service providers like Telco, uh, create the photo identification system that's needed for that uh, particular service. So it's a practical way of uh, generating valid uh, official IDs uh, for people. We've also uh, um, developed uh, regulations that allow us to rely on the third-party identification of uh, agents. Uh, again, uh, the, although there are many more banking uh, offices uh, in the Philippines, uh, the fact of uh, life is that uh, many other municipalities as well don't even have a banking office. About uh, based on our latest estimate, about 37 percent of our municipalities don't even have a banking office. But there are many establishments that are ubiquitous uh, all over, uh, commercial establishments. So by allowing partnerships between financial institutions and those kinds of businesses, uh, acting as agents, uh, in, in a sense, identification agents, we are able to facilitate the uh, identification of customers and the receipt of uh, necessary uh, documents and information. For the Philippines, I think it's very important that uh, standard setting bodies are engaged in this. There are costs to having regulations that are a barrier for including people into the system. Excluding people from the financial system uh, engenders uh, a more underground economy, for example, where people are not tracked at all. Plus the fact that uh, it lowers the opportunity for um, improving the quality of life 
And I think uh, these issues of uh, crime and terrorist financing thrive best in situations where there is more poverty. So it's very important to take a look at this uh, situation holistically in creating a more cohesive society. Having regulations that can be seen to be aligned with uh, international standards creates legitimacy for these uh, financial services and um, makes these uh, financial services as well sustainable because you put in place safeguards. Um, so, so it's always a, a balancing act in terms of being able to uh, reach out, but at the same time doing so in a responsible uh, manner that is also uh, sustainable. We have put in place some of the key regulatory frameworks necessary for the delivery of some of the critical uh, basic financial services that we feel are necessary uh, in this uh, economy. So products have been innovated and are being constantly uh, refined and uh, new innovations uh, introduced. Uh, now we're trying to see how uh, usage uh, can be further uh, expanded. And here, the, we are broadening our partnerships uh, to include, for example, uh, government as a major user of these kinds of, uh, let's say, mobile money, uh, financial services in its uh, payments uh, activities. Government payments is quite significant in an economy of this because these are the sort of applications that can create more critical mass and which makes the whole thing even more viable and uh, acceptable because um, there are economies of scale in this and the more uh, accessible and ubiquitous the, the ecosystem is, then it's the, the more acceptable it is to uh, more people. So the breaking the initial hurdles is uh, quite a challenge, but I think as critical mass is gained, I think the, the going will become uh, much faster.